Welcome to the online lecture on strategies to overcome common breastfeeding barriers. By the end of the session, students will be able to apply strategies to address common breastfeeding barriers. So before we get started with the lecture, I'd like you to pull out your assignment that you just turned in, strategies to overcome common breastfeeding barriers. And as we go through each of the common barriers, I'd like you to pause the video, refresh your memory as to what responses you placed on your assignment and then see how you did. So let's start with the first one. Strategies to overcome embarrassment to breastfeed in public. So let's say you've got a mom or her family member who calls you and says, I was thinking about breastfeeding, but I'm really on the fence. I'm not sure if I'd like to breastfeed because I am extremely embarrassed to breastfeed in public and I just don't think I can do it. So what are some things that you can tell this mom and her family members to help her feel less embarrassed to breastfeed in public. Go ahead, take a look at your responses, pause the online lecture, and then turn it back on when you're ready to hear the talking points that I have listed here. So let's go through some talking points you can share with moms or their family members who are embarrassed to breastfeed in public. Hopefully you listed many of these that are listed here. So first of all, one thing we can do is we can talk about ways to breastfeed discreetly. As you can see in the photo here of this mom breastfeeding in a park, there's really not a whole lot of skin exposure when women breastfeed, it's pretty discreet. And so if moms understand, and same with their family members, ways that they can breastfeed discreetly, that will help alleviate a lot of the concern about being embarrassed. Uh, one way to breastfeed discreetly is certain clothing are a little easier to be discreet breastfeeding than others. For example, if you wear a really tight dress, it'd be really challenging to breastfeed discreetly because you'd have to pull the dress all the way up and you'd be completely exposed and put the baby on. You can't just put your tight dress back on when the baby's breastfeeding. When you see this mom in this photo, you can see she has this regular, most likely cotton long sleeve shirt. She just lifted it up, put the baby on, and you can't see anything. There are also clothing that have been specifically developed to make nursing easier. And I'm gonna show you in a few moments some of those clothings. First, I wanna go through a couple more of these strategies. In addition to talking about ways she can breastfeed discreetly, in addition to clothing, there's also different kinds of cover-ups that you can use once you get the baby latched on. But also a helpful tip is to encourage the mom to practice breastfeeding discreetly. So, you know, practice makes better and the more the mom gets used to latching the baby on, the easier it is. But also if she can breastfeed at home in front of a mirror and practice, see what it looks like, she will see pretty quickly ways that she can breastfeed discreetly and things she can do that make it less likely that people um, can see any of her breasts if she's concerned about that. Now, the level of embarrassment is going to vary. Some moms are just a little bit embarrassed while others are very, very embarrassed. So depending on the mother, um, if you have a mom who really doesn't want to breastfeed out in public, like in a park or in the mall, in you know the food court or something like that, you want to encourage her to plan her outing. If she can think in advance, okay, I'm planning on going to the mall, uh, where are there some spots that if baby gets hungry, I can go and breastfeed discreetly? So for example, in the mall, there's tons of clothing stores that have dressing rooms. It's really easy to go and, if the mom's not comfortable, she could actually pretend she's shopping, grab a shirt, walk into the dressing room when she notices that baby's getting hungry and feed the baby in the dressing room. So that's another way that we can help a mom who feels embarrassed. If we have a mom who really, really does not want to breastfeed in public, even in a more uh, discreet location, we can encourage her to plan to give the baby some express milk in public. And so the way that would work is that if she is planning on going out for some errands and she's not really sure when the baby's gonna be hungry, she would pump in advance. And when the baby gets hungry, she would go ahead and feed the baby the express milk. The one thing we want to make sure to let moms know is that if a mom pumps in advance, let's say the baby's born about five weeks after the baby's born, mom says, you know what, don't feel comfortable breastfeeding in public. I want to have a stockpile of express breast milk. So if I need to run out 
with the baby and the baby gets hungry, I can just feed the baby breast milk. I don't want to use formula. So maybe once every three days she pumps and she starts to store that in the freezer. By the way, breast milk is good in the freezer for three to six months and a deep freezer up to 12 months. So starts doing this, she's stockpiling the breast milk and three weeks later she goes out with baby, um, baby eats that express breast milk in order to maintain her milk supply, what does she need to do? If you said express, then you're correct. We always want to make sure to let the mom know that if she misses a feeding, meaning that she gave the baby express breast milk and the baby didn't directly breastfeed from her, she needs to express as soon as possible in order to maintain her milk supply. Sometimes women get in trouble when they've been stockpiling breast milk in advance thinking, okay, I'll pump, like I mentioned before in the earlier example, I'll pump about every three days so I have some reserve. If they're using that milk a month later, the body doesn't remember that she expressed a month ago an extra pumping. So it's really important the day that she uses her express milk and doesn't breastfeed the baby as soon as possible. Ideal feeding about every three hours is when you're going to be feeding or expressing. She expresses her breasts and that's how she'll maintain her milk supply. So those are some strategies that you can share with women who are embarrassed to breastfeed in public and hopefully those pieces of information can help reduce the um, level of concern about embarrassment. We'll talk a little bit more about clothing suggestions to breastfeed discreetly. So you don't need special breastfeeding tops or dresses to nurse, but there are some items that make it much easier to breastfeed discreetly. So for example, in the photo here, you see this mom breastfeeding. As I mentioned before, she's not wearing a special top made for breastfeeding, but the fact that she has a long sleeve shirt she could just easily pull up makes it really easy to put baby on and breastfeed discreetly. Also, button down blouses work really well. The mom can unbutton the bottom buttons, put the baby on, and then the rest of the shirt just goes right over the baby. I'm going to um, show you a couple breastfeeding tops that have been made specifically uh, for breastfeeding. First, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on a couple tops and I'm going to show you how it works. And then I'm going to show you some photos of some clothing that have been specifically made for breastfeeding. So now I'd like to show you how a few of these breastfeeding tops work. So here's one blouse I got off Amazon specifically for the breastfeeding mom. So let's say I'm wearing this top and my baby gets hungry and want to feed the baby. So I go ahead, I lift up the top, I pull this out. Also, I would unsnap my uh, breastfeeding bra, pull the flap down, put the baby on, and then this piece would just go right back on. If I was nursing on the other side, same thing. I would lift, pull, latch baby on, and there you go. And so you can see how it covers up everything and it's really easy to use. I'm gonna show you one more. I think it's a lot easier for you to understand logistically how it works if you see me demonstrate it. So here's another top, also purchased on Amazon, less than $20. So here's what the top looks like. Let's say baby's hungry, mom lifts this up, pulls this down, latches baby on, and there we go. It's pretty simple to use. Um, also, really quickly, I want to show you a bra made for breastfeeding. This one is has no underwire and it has a very easy snap to open. And that's what's really important. So if baby's getting hungry, unsnap, open the blouse, put the baby on, and voila, we're ready to go. Higher end top. So these ones come from a, a maternity boutique so they're a little bit more pricey the ones that i showed you earlier i actually bought on amazon and they were all under twenty dollars these i think are sixty dollars plus again you don't need to spend money on special clothing the purpose here is for me to show you how um, these tops have been designed and what a mom might look for if she's looking for something that um, it makes it easier to breastfeed so you'll see one thing in common in all of these tops is that they have some place where you can open up and easily access the breast. So here's a hoodie. Here's another blouse where you can see the slit from the side where the mom can unsnap her bra, open up that slit, put baby on, 
here's a tank top and to the left you see a dress. They all have this. And here's a photo of a nursing bra. And you can see that both of these bras have a little snap where it makes it easy to open and put the baby on. Um, there are different types of nursing bras and what's most important is that it's comfortable, doesn't have underwire and is easy for the mom to unclip. There, I know I remember when I was uh, had my first daughter and I bought my first nursing bra and I bought one that had this little metal clip and or it was so difficult to open. It would take me sometimes five minutes just to open this little clip. I got rid of that pretty quickly because when the baby's hungry, you don't want to be messing around. You want something that's really easy to unsnap, open the flap, get the baby on. And so when we are educating moms, we want to tell them that they look for a bra that's easy for them to unsnap, look for clothing that's easy for them to put the baby on and that they feel comfortable breastfeeding in with. And again, it, the best way for them to know if it looks in a way that they're comfortable is for them to get in front of the mirror and see what it looks like to breastfeed. Um, just want to end with this reminder about nursing bras that have underwire in them. It's really important to let moms know that they want to avoid any underwire nursing bra because um, does anyone remember we talked about it in a prior lecture, why is it not a good idea to wear an underwire nursing bra? If you said because it can cause plug ducts, that's right. So um, just because it says nursing bra does not mean it's a product good for the breastfeeding mother. Same with nursing tops. I myself, when I searched for some nursing bras to purchase as demos for this class, about 75% of the ones I looked for online with a search term of nursing bras actually had underwire. Also, the tops that said they were nursing tops. I ordered a couple and um, I ordered a few from a store called Motherhood, which again, you would think Motherhood, they definitely know what a lactation top is. And the ones that I got didn't have anything that resembled what looked like easy access to the breast. So the purpose of these photos and this discussion is to educate moms and what they're looking for. So to summarize, nursing bras that are easy to unsnap and tops that are easy to quickly expose the breast to get the baby latched on and, um, put, and then breastfeed. So let's move on to the next common concern, the fear that breastfeeding will be painful. So again, pause the online video, refresh your memory on what you wrote as some key talking points you would share with a mother or her family members that are concerned that breastfeeding will be painful. Once you're done refreshing your memory, turn the video back on and see if your answers match what talking points I have listed on the slide. So let's talk about each of these. So first of all, if we've got a mom who's really worried or her family member that breastfeeding is gonna be painful, Number one, we want to ensure her and her family members that breastfeeding shouldn't hurt. It's really important for us to let moms know that, that it's not normal for breastfeeding to hurt. Also, we want to tell them that most painful situations can be prevented by teaching moms and their family members proper latch and positioning skills. So if a mom is pregnant, we want to encourage her and her family members to attend a prenatal breastfeeding class so they can learn how to properly latch and position baby onto the breast. As we mentioned before, about 75% of the time, if a mom is experiencing pain while breastfeeding, it has to do with improper latch and positioning. So if we can get those moms and their family members in early during pregnancy to come attend a class, see what a proper latch looks like, learn about different breastfeeding positions, and most importantly, know that pain is not normal, that's going to really help reduce this concern. Now, I do want to mention that um, the reason that number one talking point here is ensure mo mothers and their family members that breastfeeding shouldn't hurt is that we really want to make sure that a mom doesn't think that breastfeeding hurts. Because what can happen under those circumstances is if a mom thinks, oh, it's normal for breastfeeding to hurt, I'm a tough lady. It's really important for me that my baby get the benefits of breast milk so I can handle this. Baby's born, 
breastfeeding is hurting, she's not latching the baby on properly, and there's some irritation on the nipple, the nipple starts to crack, it starts to bleed, there's a lot of pain, but she says to herself, I can do this, I know it's hurting, but I really want to make sure my baby gets all the benefits of breast milk, and she keeps on doing this. The disadvantage to this is A, it hurts, but also what's important for her to know is that if breastfeeding's hurting, and the baby's not latched on correctly, what's happening? That's right, if the baby's not latched on correctly, they're not stimulating the breast sufficiently, and what's going to happen is that her breasts are not going to produce as much milk as the baby needs, the baby's not gonna gain as much weight as the baby needs, she's not gonna empty her breasts as much as she needs, which can lead to engorgement, also, if there's a crack or an opening in her nipple, that's an entryway for bacteria, puts her much higher at risk for mastitis. So all of these problems can occur if the mom thinks that breastfeeding should hurt and she just is gonna tolerate it. So really, if there's anything, you have only one minute or two seconds to educate a mom with this concern, you want her to know that breastfeeding shouldn't hurt if it does, she wants to get assistance from someone who can provide her with that hands-on assistance so that it doesn't hurt. Um, so again, a couple more talking points. We want to teach mothers and their family members the warning signs that suggest the need for assistance with breastfeeding. Just as I said, we want that mom or her family member to know that if she's experiencing pain, not normal, she needs to reach out to someone who can assist her hands-on with um, achieving a more effective latch and typically that's going to be a lactation consultant so when a mom does call with a concern about the fear of breastfeeding being painful it is good to educate her on the talking points I just discussed and lastly give her some resources and phone numbers so she can contact the lactation consultant or attend a local breastfeeding support group should she experience pain once baby's born and she's breastfeeding so let's talk about the next common concern, uh, time and social constraints. So a lot of women may choose not to initiate breastfeeding because they're concerned that it's going to take too much time and completely negatively impact their social life. They won't be able to go out, they won't be able to work, they won't be able to go back to school. What are some talking points you could share with a mom who has these concerns that may enable you to reduce this concern or completely remove it ideally? Go ahead and shut the online video off for a moment. Refresh your memory by reviewing your responses and turn it back on once you're ready. So hopefully you jotted down some of these uh, talking points. So number one, one thing we can do if we've got a mom and a family member who is really concerned that breastfeeding is just gonna take way too much time so they might as well formula feed, is we can walk them through the steps or the time involved in formula feeding versus bottle feeding. And so the way that this would work is you would ask the mom, um, okay, so I want you to imagine you're gonna formula feed your baby. How much time will this take? Walk me through all the steps from point A when um, you get the formula to feeding the baby. Go ahead and pause the online video. I want you to jot down all the steps that it would take to bottle feed a baby, all the time involved, and then turn the online video back on. So here's what it looks like. First, the mom or dad or family member needs to go to the store, buy the formula. Then they need to bring the formula back home. They need to sterilize the water or boil the water. Next, they need to measure how much formula they need to add and how much water. And the reason for that is that if we dilute the formula, baby's not gonna grow sufficiently. And if we put too much, they're going to gain too much weight. So we need to measure the formula mix it up, then we need to check to make sure that the water is not too hot because we don't want to burn the baby. Then we need to go ahead and feed the baby. So we put the, we mix the formula, we prepare it, we put it in the bottle and we start to feed the baby. Now when you feed a baby with a bottle, what happens is they swallow air. And when babies swallow air, guess what they need to do? Yep, they need to be burped. So they're eating and then they get a little irritated. You have to stop, burp the baby. They feed, again, they might get some more air bubbles in them. You gotta burp them. Once you finish feeding the baby the formula, then you need to wash the bottle, 
wash the nipples and they need to be sterilized. You can't just wash it any old way and then you're done. Now, how long does it take to breastfeed? Turn off the online video, jot down the steps and the time involved in breastfeeding the baby and turn the online video back on. Great, so did you say baby's hungry, mom um, puts the baby on the breast and the baby eats? If you did, wonderful. So again, with breastfeeding, you don't need to go to the store, you don't need to mix it, you don't need to measure it, you don't need special water, you don't need to check if it's too hot or too cold, it's always ready to go, right temperature. So definitely breastfeeding takes less time than bottle feeding. However, usually what this concerns about is about how much time is it gonna take me the mom and breastfeeding is something that the mom is going to be doing and if she's separated from her baby what does she need to do in order for her baby to receive breast milk yeah that's right she needs to express her milk so so part of the problem in terms of this concern is sometimes women just don't know how expressing breast milk works and it's a mystery and so part of the process of helping them um, understand or address this concern is to educate the mother and their family members about expressing and storing breast milk. What it looks like, how much time it takes, how frequently, what do I do with the breast milk, how do I give it to the baby, and in a nutshell, essentially moms who are separated from their baby for any reason, if it's going back to work, going to school, going out on an occasional date or social um, interaction with their friends. Every time mom misses a feeding, she needs to express her breast milk. So what's really helpful is to educate moms and their family members about expressing and storing breast milk. A lot of times women and their family members just don't know how it all works. What's a breast bump? How does it work? How often do I need to use it? Does it hurt? What do I do with the milk? Can I freeze it? Can I put it in the refrigerator? Does it need to be um, stored a special way. So educating them on the specifics about how to express breast milk and pumping and storing guidelines is really useful in reducing concerns about how much time breastfeeding will take. Another key talking point to share with mothers and their families when they're concerned about how long breastfeeding will take is to reassure them that many women have been successful at combining school work and having a social life. A lot of times, Women may have no friends who have breastfed. They may have no family members who have breastfed. They don't have anyone they know who's actually gone back to work and continued breastfeeding, gone to school and continued breastfeeding or did anything at, once they breastfed. So reassuring that many moms actually go back to work and they can continue breastfeeding successfully or they go to school or they go out with their friends can be really comforting and help mothers and their family members feel less concerned that breastfeeding will make them have to give up everything in their life. So instead of them thinking, okay, I really wanna breastfeed, but if I breastfeed, I have to give up work, give up school, reassuring them that that's not the case can assist them in choosing to breastfeed. Another thing that's important to share with mothers and their family members is to let them know that breastfeeding gets easier as the baby grows. So typically when babies are about up to three to four months, they eat about eight to 12 times in 24 hours. Once they're about four months old, they drop down to eating about seven to eight times in 24 hours. So the feedings become less frequent and so does the need to express breast milk if you're away from your baby. And also pumping gets easier because you get into a routine. And so letting moms notice that this is a short period of time if you're gonna breastfeed your baby for the first year, usually by six months they're on solids. Again, the feedings are gonna go down a little bit lower, so the frequency that a mom will have to pump in order to maintain her milk supply is going to gradually be less and less as the baby grows, and it's a really short period in the baby's life. And the benefit is much longer and greater than that short period of time that the mom is going to be taking the time to express when she's separated from her baby. Another important piece of information to share with mothers and family members who are concerned that it's going to take so much time to breastfeed is that um, a lot of times moms and family members have heard that if a baby breastfeeds, then the mom can never, ever, ever leave the baby with anyone else because they won't take a bottle. And while it's true that some babies don't like bottles and they may refuse
use a bottle, it's very rare. And there are some things that a mom and her family members can do to reduce the chance of a baby having any issues with taking a bottle. So first of all, the recommendation is that once you've established breastfeeding, that breastfeeding is going well, baby's gaining weight, usually at about five weeks or so, start introducing a bottle. So the mom can pump milk, leave it in a bottle, and then have someone else give the baby the bottle. It's recommended that when she does introduce a bottle that the mom not be there physically because babies are really smart. If they see their mama right there, they are gonna be a little confused as to why someone's giving them this plastic contraption full of fluid rather than them breastfeeding from their mother. So another piece of information that's important to share with moms who are concerned about breastfeeding taking too much time is that you wanna encourage them when they're pregnant, if they're planning on breastfeeding when they go back to work or school, to actually make arrangements in advance with their supervisor or advisor at school for um, figuring out specifically where they're going to express breast milk, knowing specifically where it is that you'll be doing your expressing and seeing that space and making sure that space works for you can really help moms not be concerned about how all of this will work because they can see for themselves, oh, okay, you know what? I can see that about twice during my work day, I can go and take a 15 minute break in this room I feel like this room and this space would work. It's clean, it's private, it feels relaxing. I can do Now I'd like to show you a short video that discusses strategies to help moms when they go back to work to ensure that breastfeeding is successful. You can keep giving your baby your nutritious milk even after returning to work. Talk with your employer about a good time and place to pump at work. If they seem unwilling to meet your needs, point out that federal law requires that they give time and space for mothers to breastfeed or express while at work. You can also let them know that breastfed babies are healthier, so you'll miss work less often. Talk to a lactation professional about how to store your milk, which pump and supplies are best for you, and how to plan for your return to work. Also, ask your insurance if they cover breastfeeding services or supplies. Imagine the reward of reconnecting with your baby after a hectic day at work and knowing that your pumping efforts are nourishing your baby for a lifetime of better health. You can do it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go hey, looking at mama. Now I'd like to show you another short video that talks about some strategies for effective milk removal. Essentially, if the mom is going back to work or plans to be separated on occasion from baby and would like to use a pump, here's some strategies she can use to ensure that she effectively expresses her milk. While you're at work, you'll need to pump before your breasts become overly full and often enough to collect enough milk for your baby's daily bottle feedings. There are several strategies you can use to remove more milk in less time. Use a high pumping speed until your milk lets down. As soon as your milk lets down, turn the speed down for the rest of the pumping session. Some pumps are designed to do this automatically and have a button that you push when your milk lets down. A second strategy that increases milk output is to pump at the maximum vacuum level that is comfortable for you. Keep in mind that the amount you pump can vary between pumping sessions and days of the week. Photos of your baby, a recording of her sounds and an article of her clothing can help you relax and think about your baby while you pump. Contact a lactation consultant if you worry about your milk production, how to use your breast pump, or if you have any other concerns. And I'd like to show you one other short video that talks about information to share with mothers and their families on how to prepare and store breast milk. Handling your milk appropriately will preserve the quality and safety of the milk. Practice good hygiene by first washing your hands. You can then store your milk in clean bottles that don't contain the chemical BPA. Or you can use storage bags that are designed especially for breast milk. Label each bag or bottle with the date you express the milk so your caregiver uses the oldest milk first. You will need to have an idea of how much milk your baby will eat in one day, and then store your milk in quantities that she will take at one feeding. 
A baby generally eats three to five ounces at each feeding. It's a good idea to store milk in quantities of about two ounces, four ounces, and six ounces to allow flexibility in the amount that will be warmed for a feeding. A two ounce quantity is helpful if your baby is still hungry and needs just a little more. Storing small quantities also helps you avoid needing to discard any that your baby doesn't eat. Now let's move on to the last strategy that was part of your assignment, lack of support for breastfeeding. So again, I would like you to pause the video, pull out your assignment, refresh your memory on what you've jotted down about ways to encourage mothers or some strategies to share with mothers that don't have support for breastfeeding and then turn back the video on. If you've got a mom who expresses that she's not sure she wants to initiate breastfeeding because she doesn't have a whole lot of support for breastfeeding, some information you can share with her includes specific strategies to get her more support. One of those is to encourage her to attend community breastfeeding support groups. There are support groups for breastfeeding all over uh, most cities and typically they're held once a week, same location, same time and it's wonderful for a mother even as early as her pregnancy to attend these groups. What she'll find is she'll see other mothers with babies who are breastfeeding and being around a lot of other women who are breastfeeding and seeing them breastfeed helps them feel more supported and encourage them to initiate breastfeeding and continue doing so. A lot of times moms will find that throughout the breastfeeding experience they're concerned about something they share the concern and there there's a mother with an older baby who had that concern and was able to effectively deal with it will share how she did so and that would help the mother um, in terms of other ways to get support is we want to also give moms who have this concern resources for where they can access a lactation consultant should they have a need for hands-on assistance and also where they can access breastfeeding helpline should they have questions and concerns along the way. Sometimes family members aren't supportive of breastfeeding because they don't believe breast milk is better than formula. They may think that most women don't have enough milk to adequately nourish their babies. One strategy to overcome this barrier is encouraging women to bring their significant others and influential family members to a prenatal breastfeeding class. And it's at this prenatal breastfeeding class that we would hope that the family members would gain a tremendous amount of knowledge about breastfeeding, things like what are the benefits of breastfeeding, how to successfully breastfeed. One of the bigger challenges and we find often is one of the reasons that influential family members, particularly grandma and dad, are not particularly thrilled that the mom is going to choose to breastfeed has to do with the fact that they feel that if mom breastfeeds, they won't be able to bond with the baby. So the best strategy to help with this concern is to teach family members, again, specifically grandma and dad, how they can be involved with baby, such as playing with the baby, cuddling and holding the baby, bathing the baby, dressing the baby. So here in these photos is actually my husband and my uh, kids. The top one is my daughter who's actually 19 now and then the bottom one is my twins who are about 16. And you can see that he's playing with my daughter, holding them. There's lots of ways dads can be involved with babies and bond with babies that don't involve breastfeeding. And it's really important to share these strategies with these influential family members so that they feel that breastfeeding is not going to get in the way of their relationship with their child or grandchild. So the last barrier that often affects women's um, choice to initiate breastfeeding, and particularly keep breastfeeding, is um, confidence about milk supply. This is a big one. And so if we've got moms or family members who are really concerned that the mom's not going to be able to produce enough milk to nourish the baby. We really want to instill confidence in them that most moms produce enough milk to nourish their baby or babies. And part of that involves three types of education. First, we want to educate moms and their family members on how to build and maintain a good milk supply. And this is all the information that we covered in our anatomy and physiology lecture. But if we were to summarize it, the key is 
the best way for a mom to build and maintain a good milk supply enough to feed her baby adequately is to frequently and effectively make sure that the baby is breastfeeding. The next key strategy to share with mom is and her family members is educating her and her family members on normal breastfed behaviors. We're going to talk much more in depth about normal breastfed babies in a subsequent session called Getting Breastfeeding Started. But what this is about essentially is educating family members how breastfed babies behavior is very different than the formula fed baby. If the family expects the breastfed baby to act like the formula fed baby, they're quickly going to believe that the mom's not producing enough milk and they're going to have concerns about her milk supply. She's going to have concerns about her milk supply and before you know it, she might supplement and before you know it, she's not going to produce enough milk. So that's really key. And last but not least, in terms of education or to ensure that family members and the mom truly have confidence that the mom can produce sufficient milk to nourish the baby is dispelling breastfeeding myth. And we're gonna go into great detail when we discuss the assignment on dispelling common breastfeeding myths. But what this is all about is all of the reason, there's many reasons that People out there in the public think moms can't produce enough milk and most of them are inaccurate and so we really want to make sure that the mom and the family members all have accurate knowledge about who can breastfeed. So this concludes our lecture on strategies to overcome common breastfeeding barriers.